All right, hello everybody and welcome. We have a Tuesday noon Eastern time stream for a special release that will be hitting the, the World Wide Web in about an hour. Is that right, Tom? Yeah, that's right. Yep. 40, 50, 56 minutes at this point. 56 minutes from, from now. This will be live. Yeah. This is a two bottle new distillery dive bundle. Uh, for those that don't know what we do with these is we take distill it uh, from the same distillery that was distilled on the same day, same batch. It's been put into two different uh, similar or the same type barrels. In this case, these were first fill X bourbon barrels for both of these casks, 5.89 and 5.90. And what we show after 18 years is they've developed, even though it's the same distillate, same type of wood, same type of barrel, they just they develop different characteristics that's right yeah we we started distillery dive um i want to say last year uh time's flying so it's a bit of a warp these days post COVID, isn't it um, oh, yeah. but uh but but yeah we i want to say we started uh, um about september october last year and distillery dive for the society takes kind of two different avenues either how you mentioned um make that's been distilled on the same day in the same batch from the same spirit run, um, aged in the same casks in this, in this instance, or uh, the same situation of the, of the spirit run, sometimes single cast, sometimes vatted, but they've then been either cast or recast into separate mm. uh, barrels. So we've sometimes seen uh, an exploration of sherry, you know, with, um, oh with Oloroso, with PX. Mm -hmm. I think our very first one was distillery number 24. We had X bourbon, X Oloroso and PX that kind of spread in different casks. Um, in my estimation, the, the, the real um, essence of a, of a society experience of a single cask is, is in this kind of example where it's the same cask from the same spirit run, yet our, our tasting panel still feels that different flavor profiles are, are necessary mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and helpful. So um, you and I did this, I think back in the spring of this year with, uh, with a distillery dive with number 80 yep. in the space side. Mm -hmm. Today, we are, um, we are heading to points south. Uh, and, and if you happen to be sitting at the uh, members venue on Bath Street in Glasgow, you can ask your driver to take you a mere 30 miles west and um, you'll be you'll be hitting the distillery. So it's just outside of Glasgow. And um, some people, most people are probably working. So let's get to it. Let's do yeah. a, a bit of a reveal here. We're with uh, we're with distillery number five today. Mm -hmm. um, this is a distillery that, that many people uh, know to be famous or in some instances infamous for their triple distillation on all of their uh, spirits. Um, we had a, a fantastic vatted expression from them for our um, festival month mm -hmm. in May. Um, that was that was a really nice rare release from Distillery 5. I know it impressed a lot of the members I tasted on it in, um, in, in uh, New York City with our uh, World Whiskey Day event. And, and we've gotten tremendous feedback from that vatted expression. Uh, from members um, since since its release in, in May. And now today we're looking at single cask expressions, all 18 years in first fill X bourbon barrels. Um, and this is uh, cask number 5.89 and 5.90. So um, we're going to start with the Juicy Oak and Vanilla, go in the numerical order. Um, and uh, sometimes you might start with a sweet, fruity, and mellow when you're tasting at home. But I, I like the numerical vibe. Plus, we have a slightly lower ABV on our first expression. So again, you know, distillery dives, whether it's different casts or same, it's it's they're meant to be together. They're meant to be tasted together, shared together, and and really kind of suss out those those um, subtle or sometimes not so subtle differences. Yeah, between the, the different whiskeys. Yeah, and the, I mean, these two obviously you can tell that they're they're very similar. They've got some similar characteristics characteristics but also i mean there are as you, as we get into them there are different notes coming out of these and you can see the different flavor profiles that have been assigned to these and why so that is interesting i think it also uh kind of reveals what i say is a challenge for distilleries you know that that continuously you know with their core range bottles that combine 
you know, several, marry several casks together uh, to create a core range bottling and to do it consistently, just because of the differences you can see, you know, from these oak barrels and how they can produce different whiskeys. Yeah. God bless the, the blenders. They, they, they have a very, very important job, <laughs> whether they're blending for an actual blended whiskey or a single malt. Um, you know, they're, they're very talented individuals. Yeah. So our, and there's our, a lot that happens behind them. the hats off to them. Yeah. Sorry? There's a lot that happens behind the scenes too, just with them and, and watching the, the casks and checking on them, you know, periodically to see how they're advancing, to see which ones are changing either, or, yeah, either for the better or the worse. And then maybe, you know, moving them to a separate area of the warehouse, um, using them in a, in a different blend or maybe using, doing a, a different bottling with them stuff just to keep certain casks for certain profiles. So, yeah. And that's precisely what Ewan's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, in, in the background of, of the society, you know, yeah. um, mm -hmm. he has his heresy line that, that we all get to enjoy just about, you know, once every few months or so we know at this point he has a solar system going. So that's fun. Um, and he always seems to have some really cool experimental tricks up his sleeve. And, um, you know, I've, I've learned that in, in, in months, years to come, the experimental cask programs will be ramping up a bit, uh, as will sherry cask programs. So, so that's really fun stuff to look forward to. Um, but, but here we're taking the kind of less is more approach, aren't we? There, were, there was no transfer of liquid between casks. We kept them in a, in a first fill ex bourbon barrel for all 18 years. Um, and, uh, and, and let's see maybe one aspect of this, if, if the activity of the barrels we perceive are, are a little different, maybe um, one first fill being a, 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 having a bit more influence than, than another. But right. Why don't we dive into 5.89, huh, Scott? You bet. So this one is uh, named Shaken Not Stirred. These are both, like I say, same 18 years distilled on the same day, same batch. Juicy oak and vanilla profile on this one, 57% ABV. And these will be available in an hour or less than an hour now. Uh, $195 each or the bundle will be $345. And on the nose on this one, I'm going, I'm changing it from sweet, fruity, and mellow to sweet, fruity, and floral. Are you, you tasting 5.89? Yeah. Or no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mixed it up. Yeah. Juicy oak. Yeah. I had to, I had to change it around in my mind. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's I mean, to be fair. Um, if we were tasting these, you know, showing these at an event, perhaps we might switch them up because the sweet, fruity, and mellow, at least theoretically, should precede a, a juicy oak and vanilla. You know, I mean, you, you typically you're using those descriptors for a reason that they're a bit more integrated. It might speak to a texture of some sort. That's um, that's perhaps a bit different from. The juicy oak and vanilla. Right. Um, uh, for me, from my experience from juicy oak and vanilla, this is you know spirit forward, barrel forward spirit that um, that tends to have a nice nice bit of structure to it from the tannins in the barrel, um, and uh, and also obviously that that vanilla at the end of the descriptor is going to give you some idea of at least the the confectionery um, aspect of of what you're getting. You getting that vanilla on the nose? Vanilla and a little bit more maltiness than I get on the next one, but and I didn't get that before. But definitely oak and vanilla, malty. I'm not getting a bunch of oak. I mean, I'm getting a, a, a bit of oak on the nose. I'm getting a lot of that vanilla, kind mm -hmm. of a like a vanilla, like an angel food cake vanilla sponge. Um, and I'd I'd go on to say if you were to. I don't know. Find me a, a, a light like Johnson spirit. <laughs> I don't think that exists. But if it does, you know, just kind of aspects of that. Very light herbal. Nose. A little bit of citrus. Kind of soaked in that. Kind of a boozy angel food cake. Really, really nice nose. I was going to say earlier, you touched on the triple distillation. Uh, yeah. like a, lot of, a lot of Irish whiskeys do. Uh, this Lowland distillery, of course, has done it, does it, and it will produce, you know, kind of that sweeter, fruitier distillate, lighter. Yeah, they're known locally as the breakfast whiskey, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it should, in theory, um, produce a, a much gentler, lighter uh, spirit. And um, 
I would venture to say that this is a, a pretty big nose full, at least. Let's see how how it how it goes on the palate. You bet. And I think that was a that was an aspect that that surprised and delighted a lot of our members back in May. They were expecting that breakfast whiskey. And there was a lot more verve there. There was a lot more intensity, more body than, than I think a lot of us anticipated. Um, so a good, you know, a, a good example of how um, society whiskey oftentimes can deviate to some extent from the distillery profile. Yeah. And Tom, Tom Cat comments, he says, a cake made of angels, which reminds me, I actually would say angel food cake with a nice kind of vanilla sugary frosting. Almost like a wedding. Yeah, meal. absolutely. That's it. I yeah. mean, yep. Now I'm I'm starting to get now now that I'm beyond my my vanilla aspect. I'm I'm getting a bit more tropical fruit. Maybe um, mm, more like stone fruit. Sorry, like a peach, peachy uh, cobbler yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, going on. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. All right, well, cheers. I'm going to get in on the palate. Slanja, nice little uh, afternoon delight for me. I guess a morning delight for you, Scott. <laughs> Never too early. <laughs> 5, 5 p.m. somewhere, as they say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that wedding cake on my mind is definitely up front on that. That nice vanilla frosting slight oak here almost a little bit of a peppery touch on the back end of it as well oh, yeah yeah mm -hmm. it carries some really nice i'd call that white pepper okay uh -huh. maybe even a little black pepper i mean that's yeah uh -huh. it's got a nice spice in the finish up front I'm, I'm getting a lot of kind of candied almost like a like a candied orange peel mm -hmm. a bit of fresh citrus too mm-hmm Yeah, nice creamy vanillas all over this one. Mm. Just those that nice cake. Uh, sticking with those fruits as well, though, even. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice stone fruits. A little bit darker fruits. Not citrusy. Just more apricot, more peachy. Mm. Yeah. Maybe a little apple. Maybe a little bit of a, of a uh, baked apple, a cooked kind of where it's been simmered and cooked down. And the barrel tan, and I'm I'm now getting that that nice hit of oak, as well on the finish around the kind of the sides of the mouth where tannin is typically perceived, um, provides a nice structure for that. Kind of carries that core of, of vanilla, kind of citrus, um, um, stone fruit through on a on kind of a, a spicy earthy. Yeah. Um, no, it's really nice. Yeah, definitely. I put a drop of water in mine. See what happens here. So, would you call this breakfast whiskey? I mean, you're the closest to breakfast here. <laughs> oh yeah, um, definitely. It's it's a going down good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll add a little little bit of water here. Hmm. Creamier. Almost a little bit more of the oak bite, oak tannin showing through. All the same notes, though, really. I think maybe the fruit's starting to show itself a little bit more in there as well with water. Still a little spicy on that back end. Mm. Per just a perfect hint of that spiciness, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. Jordan Wall says, all this cake talk is making me hungry. Tomcat wants to know what's a good pairing for this. Um, good pairing? I'm gonna go desserts. I mean, chocolates. I mean, you could, yeah, you could, you could easily go with dessert for sure. That that angel food cake, maybe, yeah. um, maybe a lemon meringue or something like that. That would that would uh, mm. pick up on some of the citrus I got at least. Mm. You could go with <clears throat> maybe um, kind of a, a fruit salad. That, that has a dusting of some kind of uh, more herbal spice, like a touch of cardamom or something, like um, uh, feta, watermelon, mm -hmm. a little bit of spice in there, something like that. Mm -hmm. That could be nice as kind of an aperitif. Mm -hmm. 
Main course, Tomcat, we're giving you everything here, man. <laughs> maybe, maybe not in the proper <laughs> gustatory order, but um, main course, I, I mean, I go fish and chips. Mm. Let's cut through all that grease with that nice, bright acidity and tannin. Yeah. Uh, That's get, good. That's get a little bit, well, get to a great start. Getting a little bit more citrus now with the water as well. <laughs> the fruit's starting to show itself a little bit better and actually turning a little bit lighter. Into, into more citrusy so yeah i may have added a little too much water to mine i, I maybe should have dialed that back a few drops you know but that's okay you can always add more whiskey right yeah that's right all right so all right should we uh should we get into our next guy 5.90 yeah. <clears throat> this one is named 5.90 luscious greenery same same distillate as the last one, 18 years old, sweet, fruity, and mellow profile on this one. First fill X bourbon barrel, same as the first, 57.5%, so just a touch higher ABV. And again, the both bottles will be available in a bundle for $345 or $195 each. In fact, is let me get a swig of water in here in between these. Yeah, get a swig. Yeah. That's I mean, that's a pretty different nose for sure. Where I was getting all kinds of vanilla sponge in the first one. And I don't want to anchor you. You know what? I'll just, I'll stop there for now. I'll let you taste. Yeah. No, well, no, this is the one that I would rename sweet, fruity, and floral. To me, a lot more. And I mean, it's with a luscious greenery name. Uh, maybe some of that greenery, but just uh, to me, floral, almost rose petal-ish. Yeah. And, yeah. and definitely. Did you hear that rumbling above my head just a yeah. second ago? Those were the, those were the whiskey gods. Telling me not to anchor you. Actually, <laughs> it's event space upstairs, so apologize if there's a lot of noise coming through. <clears throat> but more, more floral, and definitely uh, almost a little bit more berryish uh, for fruits. A little bit more sweeter. Interesting. Okay, because I first nosing, I got milk chocolate kind mm. of fudge. Oh, like a thick, Ooh. thick milk chocolate, which is, I mean, you know pretty different from vanilla sponge cake yeah i mean they're all going to give you diabetes but aside from that you know, you know it's, uh, <laughs> anything flavor, in flavor wise everything in moderation just like drink. right sure even just moderation like before noon <laughs> <laughs> even moderation <laughs> yeah Woo. Mm. but yeah i do get tons of that floral aspect or the, the, the bramble rather the bramble aspect that you're talking about the the berries yeah yeah the floral jumped out at me at first one compared to the juicy oak and vanilla. The floral on this one was the first thing that jumped out of the, out of the glass on the nose at me. Yeah. Not near as much vanilla, not, not oaky. Yeah. I'm not getting the vanilla like I did in the first right. time. Huh? Right. Ooh. Hmm. That's a, that's a juicy berry. I mean, I thought I was getting kind of um, almost like a blackberry, which hmm. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm I'm imagining that, but no, I'd, I'd say raspberry. It's something brambly to me, the blackberry raspberry kind of family. Yeah, uh, definitely. Cinnamons. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. The first one, the juicy oak and vanilla, I'd say is more cakeish. You know, we got in those vanilla cakes, the sponge cake. This one, more fruit, kind of dessert tart type nose. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's that's a that's a nice assessment. Maybe with a scoop of my milk chocolate ice cream on top. Oh yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> I mean, I do get that chocolate up front, but now as I nose a bit longer, it's shifting incredibly to to the the ripe fruit, to the uh, to the herbal components. Yeah, yeah, or rather the floral components. All right, nice. it's very nice. Yep. Cheers. Get in on the palate on this Longe. one. What's everybody drinking out there at, at this early hour? Mm. Anything fun? Did anybody grab the uh, mm. out of this world? Was it out of this world? Oh, no, it wasn't. Bowled over, I think, wasn't it? No, the, um, the, the Distillery 5 rare release. Out of this world was um, 18. That was the 19. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, so pretty sure, um, I'm pretty sure it was bowled over around the clock. Was that it? It was around the clock. 
Yeah. I wonder if anybody grabbed that, if they're refreshing their recollection. Yeah, on the palate, this one's definitely more berry, uh, more fruity, floral. I get, I get hints of rose petals here. Um, and just kind of, if you walked into a, a greenhouse and all of these plants were growing and the humidity in there, just all Pulling the- their heads off? All the, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Now up front, I'm getting, going back to the citrus, I mentioned orange, kind of a candied orange peel on the, on the first one. I'm getting more of like a riper kind of pulpy uh, orange character at the entry, perhaps with other citrus. Well, and you'd started to say tropical on the first one, changed it to orchard fruits. I'm going a little bit more tropical here with this one, a little bit of cantaloupe, a little bit of melon almost, and, and probably even the melon yeah. rind, that kind of that tart, almost like a cantaloupe with it really got that green um, rind to it. Yeah. Mm. So you, you, I'm, I'm getting those at, at the kind of first attack, right? The initial flavor, but now on the mid palate, on the finish, it's shifting very clearly to a, a more kind of grassy, green, herbaceous um, mm -hmm. notion. I'm not the best with herbs, but there is some herbal component in there, in there for sure. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. Fresh herbs. Yeah. Important to note fresh herbs versus dried herbs. Yeah. Because uh, that is kind of a different experience, isn't it? And as soon as you said fresh herbs, I thought rosemary. A little herbal herbal essence to it. Hmm. Yeah, amazing the difference between the two distillates. Now, neat. I think this is a lot creamier. I think this this has a bit more texture, um, kind of a silky silkiness to it on the on the neat palette that the first one maybe maybe had a bit more structure. Um, could be a result of you know of, of some things like say the barrel um could just be me but i, I feel like there's definitely a, a a silky softness um texture to this to this uh 5.90 mm -hmm. it's not in the first one after after adding water yes you achieve that but neat and Tomcat is asking if it's vegetal. It's not really vegetal. It's just kind of it's uh, it's yeah. floral, it's greenery, and it's it's you know some of those herbal notes. Not necessarily vegetal or earthy, even lighter, fruitier, berries, herbal notes, floral notes. Yeah, I wouldn't go in the I wouldn't go in the in the realm of say like pepper, like bell peppers or anything like that. You know, which is sometimes where vegetal leads you in the in the drinks world. Um. But uh, if anything, like the essence maybe of cucumber or something like that. But in essence, you know, it, it's a very, it's a very soft, um, very light touch. Mm. Cucumber water, you know, where you just got, got right exactly yeah. that hint of cucumber. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Mm. Ryan Mercer says it sounds like an Irish. It was a second drop of water on this one. Wow. No, uh, both of these just beautiful palettes, nice finishes. And even so, even on the first one, we got a little bit of a peppery spice on the on the tail end. Not here on this one. Uh, there is some cinnamon, a little bit of cinnamon, you know, throughout. But just more berry and floral and herbal. I like that cinnamon note. So that's a that's a pretty, pretty big difference in the kind of spice, right? Right. Uh -huh. So more of a black pepper, white white black pepper spice mm -hmm. in the first mm -hmm. versus this cabinet spice that we're mm -hmm. getting right in the second. That's that's a fun. Mm -hmm. And I just got that fudge. You were talking. You kind of mentioned a milk chocolate fudge earlier. I just got yeah. That with and that was with water. I didn't. I wasn't getting it neat, but it, with water to me kind of brought that one out. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Very nice. Ooh. All right, so I need just a touch more water here. This is a great way to start the day, Tom. 
<laughs> yeah, we have to work all day, don't we? God help my projections for uh, 2023. <laughs> well, they'll be very good. Very good projections. Oh, they're going to be extremely optimistic. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're, we're going to crush it. And you guys are all going to help us out there. So thanks in advance. Hmm. Yeah, the, the the chocolate note becomes certainly more prevalent with uh, with water. I think so. Yeah. And your um, your berries are turning into a, almost a bit of jam. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sweet. Yep. Like you say, nice cabinet spices, baking spices, milk chocolate, mm -hmm. slight for floral, herbal. I get that cinnamon. I get that cinnamon that you were you were talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't get a huge, you know, like you know, open up the open up the cabinet spice and let's go nuts. I don't get a whole bunch of different mm -hmm. things like we might from from sherry, but I, I do get that cinnamon for sure. They're pretty pretty pronounced. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm. Texture's even more luscious. Mm -hmm. Really silky, very nice, and and just. Yep. Those accents of 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 the herbal kind of notes, whether it's rosemary or thyme or tarragon, you know, we'll just thyme. Yeah, we'll just cue cue Simon and Garfunkel right now and let them take over. Um, <laughs> it's fresh. That's that that's nice. It's it's all fresh, you know. Yep. Kind of lifts up the palate, and it's quite nice. Frederick Keeter is asking, where have all the fives been lately? We've had a couple releases, yeah. not too many. Yeah, fives were off off the radar, at least with the U.S. chapter, for a long time. Um, and, uh, and, and they've just now started to creep back in. I think maybe a, a, about a year or so ago, they started to, to come back. And, and we're seeing them with this incredible age. It would be nice to see some some younger expressions as well. Just see how those are doing. Yeah, most of the most of the casks that we've released um, are, are are eighteen years old. So, you know, this might be the sweet spot in in Ewan's estimation, and just let them fly. You know, this is really that that kind of window. After you're checking on them for you know a couple decades almost, um, maybe you realize, hey, this is it. This is time to pull them because it. The, the barrel, you know, it's a first fill X bourbon barrel. It's pretty active, right? Um, yeah. So with this with this more delicate make, you'd think that maybe a first fill for 18 years isn't the best way to go. But damn, I mean, these are these are beautiful whiskeys. So, yeah, you know, it, he knows, he knows, he knows what's going on. He knows what's up. So. And I think they're pretty they're pretty indicative though at the same time though of of our single barrels, the single casts that we've gotten that we've released yeah. from number five, which are quite a bit different than the core range bottles. And I like you know some of the core range bottles as well from distillery number five, but the single casts that we get from them are just like if you like if you think uh you know the core range bottles are are the best out there, uh, and then you try these single cask. Uh, releases that we get, you're just I think you're you can be blown away by them because they're they're yeah. so different. And unique and delicious. And that's very common feedback, you know. Yeah. Whether it's a Lowland Distillery or, or or an Isla Distillery or or Space Side favorites of of uh, whiskey lovers, they say, you know, I either liked or maybe didn't like so much the official bottlings of these particular distilleries, but in the single cask form that the society offers, it's just it's a new view on things. It's a fresh take. And um, it's a lot of a lot of people's cup of tea. Yeah. So oh, yeah. You know, it's nice. It's nice to share. And um, you know, we certainly hope that you enjoy these whiskeys side by side. I, I think it's a really excellent exploration of the nuances that can that can occur over you know over the course of this maturation with with whiskeys that in theory should be very very you know should be eh, identical is a strong word, but. Yeah. These are a bit more different than than I expected, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice, and it's very interesting. And, and like we kind of touched on before, I think that's kind of it shows the challenges of distilleries in releasing core range bottles and keeping that consistency. Uh, when you yeah. can see two different uh, casks distilled on the same day, 
put into the same type of barrels results in two different tasting whiskeys. So, yeah. Hmm. Uh, poor What's Andre. Up, man? Poor Andre Studios was tuning in, and he said, "Hey, all, I'm a new member. Happy to be here. Well, thanks for joining, hey. and uh, glad you're here." Poor Andre Studios. Yep. All right. Well, Tom, thank you. And again, so these will be available in about 26 minutes now as a bundle. Uh, both of them, two 18-year-old whiskeys, single cask, one's 57 percent, one's 57 and a half percent, one juicy oak and vanilla, one sweet fruity and mellow, and. Uh, 345 for two single cask 18 year olds is, is a great value and actually saves you, uh, what is it, about $45, $50 if you bought yeah. them separately. So they're $195 yeah. a piece, or you can buy both of them for the 345 So that's right. Yeah. Well, great, man. This is a, this is a fun little uh, midday exploration. Yeah, you bet. So thanks. Thanks for uh, having me with you. And, um, you know, these, these distillery dives, I think, are really important. There are more of these to come, and um, we look forward to sharing sharing more of these with uh, with the members. So yeah, I find yeah. it fascinating. I just like to see, like I say, the differences just from what that wood can can do. So yeah, right, man. All right, Tom. Well, uh, as we say, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society whiskeys are not for swigging, glugging, or knocking back. Please drink responsibly. Cheers. Slaja. Thank you.